Hello everybody and welcome to Hartley College and the Event Course Owners Association Equestrian Extravaganza. Your commentators are Henry Simington and this handsome fellow John T. Evans and we're about to uh, get this show on the road. Well a very warm welcome to Hartbury. We've got a really packed programme for you this afternoon. We start with dressage. So without uh, further ado it gives me very great pleasure and give her a warm welcome Gemma Green. Good afternoon everybody and welcome to Hartbury. First of all I'd like to say it's nice to see so many of you turning up for such a worthy charity. Um, you'll have to excuse, he's going to knock the wind out of me so <laughs> if there's a heavy breathing I do apologise. Um, this is Bruno, um, fine time. He's a nine year old Westphalian stallion and I've had him since he was seven years old. Um, he's currently competing at Pre St George and at home he's starting to work on the Grand Prix movements. So first off today what I'm going to show you is a little bit of the canter work. Um, we'll show you some of the zigzag half passes, some pirouettes and some changes. <laughs> so we'll begin with the canter zigzag half passes. So if I just warm him up with a couple just to get him used to the arena down the long sides and then we'll have a go on the center line. So in a Grand Prix test on the center line, the zigzags, you have to turn down and do three strides, one movement. So as you can see, he's a little bit strong, just kind of looking at everything in the arena. So we'll turn a circle up here and I'll just come down one more time from the sea end. Good boy. But it's basically for me, just getting him used to the change in bend and being able to do the flying change before really thinking about the counting. But the main thing for me when you're working him is that he's still jumping through from behind. And although there's an awful lot of collection, <coughs> excuse me, within a pirouette, it still has to be ridden nice and forward. Good boy. And the main objective of that for a Grand Prix is that the hind legs are cantering around the size of a dinner plate. Um, and that you're keeping the same rhythm and the bend. <coughs> the level that he's competing at at the moment, at Pre St George, you're doing half pirouettes, and then in the into one level, you do a full pirouette. This way he finds a little bit harder in the fact we just lose the rhythm a little bit. I don't know if you could see there. <coughs> so before he gets too tired, we'll have a little look at some changes. In the Pre-St. George and into one, um, Pre-St. George is three time changes, um, four time changes. And then in the into one, you have threes and twos. <coughs> So the main thing with this horse is that sometimes he can come a little bit short on the left hind. <coughs> so it's a case of keeping him jumping that hind leg forward. Uh, 
just with him in the twos as well. It's just sort of getting his confidence a little bit. And just there, we, we lost the balance. He came a little bit down on his shoulders. Good boy. And there you can see he's better just through sort of keeping the balance that the, the front ends up and that the hind legs engage. So we're going to have a little play with the ones, but as I say, he's not quite there yet. Good boy. So for me, starting the ones with him, we've been doing it on the uh, long side so that he has a wall to kind of keep the straightness and also for him as sort of a security blanket. So. Uh, he doesn't feel he's sort of out on his own in the middle on the diagonal. And just really, in my mind, knowing how many I want when I ask. But it's just a case of getting a couple and then building them up as you go. Ooh. Bravo. And I think we'll leave it on that for those. <laughs> Good boy. And then as you can see, he loves his trot. He's quite a show off in the trot. Um, but it's still a case of keeping him engaged behind that he doesn't all just become about the front leg. Um, it can look very pretty, but obviously the back end needs to be there for all the movements. Oh boy. So we now have a little look at his passage. Oh boy. So the main thing with him is that he keeps the same rhythm. He sometimes has a tendency to become a little bit sort of frantic and lose the rhythm behind. Oh boy. And also not to sort of do too much of it, being able to kind of come into it and go back out again and keeping the same feel in the rain. Oh boy. Yeah. I think he has a real talent for this. With his PF, he's still learning. So it does, it does travel far more than you would want in a uh, Grand Prix test. Um, but it's just basically getting him to understand the rhythm and the whole logistics of the movement that I'm asking. Good boy. Yeah. And then I always find it better to trot out so that they learn, again, like with the canter pirouette, although it's a very collect movement, that they're always taking you out and forward. For him, at the moment as well, it's slightly easier to come from walk, just so that he can sort his, his feet out and get the rhythm a little bit easier. And then as the training goes on, we'll progress from the trot, just being able to shorten and quicken him down into the PF. Good boy. Good boy. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I think um, another round of applause for Gemma. That was really fantastic, Gemma. <laughs> Gemma did assure me earlier that the applause is very good training for both her and the horse. Well, I'd like to uh, also thank uh, Gemma. It's been a brilliant, brilliant demonstration. Well, this afternoon has all been organised uh, by the Event Horse Owners Association. And uh, to tell us a little bit more about that organisation, I've got here the lovely uh, Marion Green, who is the membership secretary. So, uh, Marion, tell me just a little bit about what the Event Horse Owners Association does. Well, it was started originally by a group of owners who wanted to raise the profile of owners at events spearheaded by Judy and Jeremy Skinner, Judy is now our chairman, started the Event Horse Owners Association and it has really gone on from strength to strength. We now have hospitality at Burley and Badminton and lots of other events 
um, owners and riders really appreciate the facilities we offer. And uh, from then, actually, we've gone on to do things for grassroots riders as well. The Event Horse Owners Association realised that there's not just owners with brilliant horses for top riders, there's the grassroots riders as well, and they are really the backbone of British eventing. Um, and so we do an awful lot of training for the grassroots rider. They're absolutely brilliant. It's all with top trainers. All sorts of, of top riders give their time um, to help grassroots riders improve. It gives you so much confidence. It's lovely when you're at an event, you, you, know, you meet people you know, you meet other EHOA members. We're a really sort of fun social crowd of people. If there are any young event riders here, or older ones like me, um, do join. You'll have a lot of fun. You'll meet some really, really nice people. Well, thank you, Marion. That's a fantastic explanation about the Event Horse Owners Association. And thank you very much for organising this afternoon. I know that you and uh, Cathy Butler have been working really hard to add Anna to put on this fantastic show. And we're going to move on now uh, to a display of tent pegging. And I can tell you that you're in for a real fantastic display. It really is fast and furious. Now this uh, tent pegging will be uh, via the Light Cavalry. Light Cavalry was formed in 1861 and will celebrate its 150th anniversary in 2011. Cavalry is, of course, also a living embodiment of the amazing camaraderie experienced by all service personnel, and none more so than those who are proud to serve with the HAC. Well, that concludes the first half of the uh, EHOA eventing extravaganza. Join us after the break, where we'll be in the main ring for more action.